In this video, I want to share some of my favorite sock knitting patterns with you. We are going to talk about eight patterns in total. All of them are beginner friendly and they are also free. Sounds good? Let's get started. The first sock knitting pattern that I want to share with you is my go-to pattern and I've made it countless times and it is the Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erika Lüder. Now this was actually the very first sock knitting pattern I ever used to knit myself a pair of socks. I'm going to insert a picture for you somewhere here showing you this pair of socks that I made back in 2018. The yarn I used was hand dyed by myself with avocados and I was so pleased with the overall result. I loved how the yarn came out and how the yarn looked in combination with the simple knit pearl pattern motif of the Hermione's Everyday Socks. Now the pattern is free like all of the patterns I'm about to mention. Uh, the only downside here is that it only comes in one size. It is written for 64 stitches, but don't worry if this is not the size you would like to make. You can easily size up or down by increasing in increments of four stitches. So you could also make, for example, a 60 stitch count sock or a 68 stitch count sock. Like I said, I've made this pattern numerous times before and I have one or I think actually two examples to show you here. Now this is a pair I've made years ago with a yarn that I've naturally dyed myself using pine needles. It was a bit of an experiment and I was so delighted when I got this beautiful shade of warm yellow. And this is another pair of socks that I just finished recently. It is actually knitted in the undyed colorway called Snow of my Luster Sock DK base. Now Luster Sock DK is technically a DK weight yarn, but I still knitted this pair of socks by casting on 64 stitches and I used a very small needle. I like to knit my socks at a very tight gauge so that they last longer. I used a two millimeter needle which corresponds to a US zero. Now I'm going to show you the stitch pattern once again. As you can see, this simple combination of knit and purl stitches creates this beautiful motif. And I think this motif is also perfect whatever type of yarn you want to knit it with. So it looks good with speckled yarns, variegated yarns, but also solid yarns. So I can highly recommend this pattern. And let's have a look at the, the heel. Not sure if you'll be able to tell. This is a heel flap and gusset construction with an eye of partridge heel flap. So you are um, alternating slipping stitches and knitting stitches to create this beautiful shape. And one more thing about the toe. Um, if you have a look at the pattern, you see that the decreases are made in certain increments. So you decrease at a slower rate at the beginning and uh, more rapidly towards the top. And I have to say this is a toe that fits my feet personally very well. So whenever I see a pattern with a different toe, I usually swap it out for this toe because I like it so much. This pattern is a very, very popular pattern on Ravelry. So if you have knitted socks before, you have already probably come across it. Have you made a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks before? If so, please leave a comment and let me know. Now the next pattern that I want to talk about is called the Broken Seat Stitch Socks by Hanna Levenyemi, I think. Uh, I have one example for you here. I think this is a absolutely beautiful pattern. If you are looking for a pattern that gets you a two color or even more color effect without doing some color work knitting, I can highly recommend this pattern. 
This beautiful motif is created by slip stitches and I think it looks absolutely stunning when you use a main color, a solid main color along with either a colorful yarn like a speckled yarn or a variegated yarn or even some mini skeins like I did here. This is a pair of socks that I've made for my daughter a couple of years ago and I used my own hand dyed yarn in the Luster Sock Decay Base and what I did here is that I had created a mini skein set at that time which was called Monet's Irises I think. I'm going to put up a picture for you so that you can see and I used this mini skein set along with um, the undyed cream colorway called Snow and I used one mini skein for the heel flap and gusset and one mini skein for the toe and then alternated maybe you can best see here in the stripes alternated between the different colorways and I think it came out so so pretty. There's one thing you have to know about the broken seat stitch socks and that is the fact that this is more of a recipe compared to an actual pattern. So I would not recommend the pattern if you've never made a pair of socks before. However, if you are familiar with the construction of a sock, you can absolutely use this pattern. And like I said, I can highly recommend it. I have made it several times and I think it looks very, very beautiful. The next sock knitting pattern that I want to recommend is called the Blueberry Waffle Socks by Sandy Turner. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a sample with me right now because I knit a lot of socks that I gift to other people, but I'm going to put up at least two pictures of two Blueberry Waffle Socks that I've made in the past. I really like the look of these socks. They fit very nicely and due to the ribbing that is incorporated in the pattern motif, the socks pull in just a little bit and this way they fit very nicely and um, I really like to use them for knitting socks to gift because this way I can make sure even if I cannot try them on as I knit them because they are for someone else that they are still going to fit really nicely. I also think even though the pattern motif is very simple and also only consists of knit and purl stitches similar to the Hermione's everyday socks they still create a not so basic look and I really like that. Originally this knitting pattern is written for a DK weight yarn and I think the stitch count is only 52 stitches. Let me check. Yes, 52 stitches but you can easily increase the number of stitches if you want to use a fingering weight sock yarn. You just have to make sure that you size up in increments of four so you could go for 60 stitches or even 64 stitches without any problems. The next knitting pattern I want to talk about is called the Rye Light Socks by Tin Can Knits. I hope the camera is focusing otherwise I'm going to insert a picture for you afterwards. Now, this is an awesome pattern because it comes in a huge amount of sizes. It goes from baby sizes all the way up to adults. And this is a sock that I've made for one of my daughters when she was seven. And I cast it on 57 stitches for her. Now the stitch pattern itself is very simple. Let me see if I can show it to you one more time. Yes, I think it's focusing. So it is a simple combination of knits and pearls again, but you get this garter stitch part in the front, which I think looks very lovely. Other than that, it is again another calf down sock with a classic heel flap and gusset construction and a symmetrical toe. I think this is a very cute pattern and like I said, since it comes in so many sizes, you could make one pair for the whole family. And in case you want to use a thicker yarn, this is also possible. There is another version of the pattern available called the Rye Socks. So this is the Rye Light and the other pair is called, or the other pattern is called the Rye Socks. 
and is written for a worsted weight yarn. So you can choose whatever you like and both patterns are available for free, which I think is absolutely awesome. Another very beautiful and free sock knitting pattern is this one. This is called the Mercury Socks by Kim Drota and it contains a gorgeous lace motif all throughout the front of the sock. The sock is knitted top down and also has a classic heel flap and gusset construction and it even comes in four different sizes. I've made this pair of socks years ago for my godmother and I absolutely loved how the socks came out and looking at it now I think I have to make one more pair of these socks because they are just too beautiful. All right, the next pair of socks is one that I just finished. I haven't even woven in the ends yet. This is my version of the Kura socks, a pattern or more of a recipe by Miss Evil Knits. Something special about this sock knitting pattern is the fact that it is not available in written form. You can only get it in the form of video tutorials, which are very in-depth videos. I think there are four in total where she walks you through the creation of a pair of Cura socks step by step. Now uh, this is the only pattern in my pattern recommendations list that is knitted bottom up and not calf down or I think you say toe up, right? Bottom up would be for a sweater. So it is knitted toe up. So you start at the toe and cast on and then work your way up to the heel where you do a heel flap and gusset or you also have the option to do a short row heel and then you continue knitting the leg and finish off with a garter stitch calf. This sock recipe is intended to be knitted with unspun yarn. So this is the only sock knitting pattern that personally I would not recommend to make if you are a sock knitting beginner because knitting with unspun yarn is a lot more difficult compared to knitting with a traditional spun yarn. What I did for my socks is that I used one strand of Pleutolopi by Istex together with Nutidin by Ona Ok Air. So this created this beautiful, mild, almost watercolor effect. And I used several colorways of the May 2024 collection that just came out. I really like the recipe because there are so many options. Miss Evil Nets really wants you to create a pair of socks that fit your feet really well. So she gives you, like I said, lots of different options. There is one version that you can do in plain stockinette and I chose to do the other option which is this beautiful grass stitch motif which I think looks just stunning. I have to say though, I do have to experiment a bit more knitting socks with unspun yarn. I feel like my tension was too loose when I increased here and also when I did the heel flap and gusset, but I was so afraid that the yarn would break that I didn't, I think I just didn't pull tightly enough when I purled. So maybe I'm going to I'm thinking about unraveling up to here and then trying to do it one more time to get exactly the fit that I'm looking for because the feel of the socks is really great. I am very much looking forward to wearing unspun yarn socks. However, this is the only the first sock that I made so I have one more sock to go. I'll report back to you in the future how this turns out and yeah, if I can recommend knitting and wearing socks made out of unspun yarn. And the last pattern that I want to share with you is called the Simple Sport DK Weight Socks by Lindsay from A Wooden Nest. This pattern is available for free on Lindsay's website and is a simple stockinette stitch sock that is knitted 
cuff down with a garter heel, which is a bit unusual, but I personally really like the look of. If you're looking for a very basic, simple sock knitting pattern, I would highly recommend that you check this one out. I do not have a sample with me to show you right now, but I think that if you're looking for a basic, simple pattern for a bit of a heavier weight yarn, like a sport or a DK weight yarn, you should check out Lindsay's pattern over on her website. I'm going to link it for you down below. Now, those are my eight sock knitting pattern recommendations that I have for you today. I would absolutely love to know what sock knitting patterns you like to knit. So please leave me a comment down below. And if you're interested in learning my tips and tricks of knitting sturdy, long lasting socks, especially when using non superwash all natural sock yarns, I have written a free guide that I'm going to link for you down below. Until next time, happy making! Bye!